Welcome back from the break. Welcome back to Perspective, the Action Pack Youth Debate Show. So, in this second part of the show, we're going to have what I like to call the actual debating round. So, previously, each of you gave a short one to two minute speech just outlining your points. But in this part of the show, what's going to happen is we're going to start off with one group making a starting point, one of their arguments, and then we're going to have the other group uh, res responding and providing a counter argument to what was said and then we're going to go back and forth until we come to an end of that specific string of debate and then I'm going to pass it on to the next group to come up with a starting point. So I want, uh, I hope both teams are ready with your notes out, it seems like you're ready with your, uh, with your arguments. So I'm going to ask EYC group 2, the team arguing for the topic of technology and social media in schools. I want you to, you guys to, firstly one of you guys, to give one of your starting arguments to the opposition team and then we'll see how they respond. Um, if you don't have your phones in school, um, how are you meant to contact your parents or carers to say if there was a fire in your school and they needed to know where you were or you were going to get home late? Okay, so three lines, what, uh, what they are saying is uh, mobile phones are required for safety for the student because if they are in a tricky situation outside of, outside of home or if they're far away from family, they need mobile phones to be able to contact relatives in difficult situations. What would your response to that be? I understand what you are saying <coughs> is that if there is an emergency that one... Uh, that can one you hold the mic a bit closer to you? that if there's an emergency they must call, call their parents to tell the emergency however if you look back um, 20 years 10 20 years you'll see that students have managed to in these situations by not telling when when their parents have been informed through other ways um, if you take an example as a famous person such as bill gates he he did not use technology yeah, at that time but he still managed to b become a um, a massive uh, entrepreneur. Yeah. If there's a problem, they will be able to. Parents will be informed in other ways, such as letters and um, and. So parents will be. Yeah. There's other ways to inform to inform parents. So uh, they're saying that 20 years ago, 20, 30 years ago, when there wasn't any form of mobile communication, students still managed to survive somehow in tricky conditions and get back home safely. Would you have any response to that? Um, but now there's, there is technology and we can use it, so if we can use it, why should we not be allowed to take it into school? Okay, so if, if there is an, a very easy method of contacting our parents, why should we just leave it and not use it? And go through the hassle of, I don't know, sending a letter? The 2015 UK Office for National Statistics found that teens who spent three plus hours on like, social media and stuff on school days are twice as likely to suffer poor mental health so that so you're saying that even though we can have phones safety wise they will also prove to be a hindrance and a distraction as well so you said that if we don't have um, if we if we have the phones and we have an easy way to contact our parents why don't we use it but they're saying that it also provides to be a distraction in school because like he just said social media can affect children's mental health so you have to weigh up the pros and cons of, of having a mobile phone in school okay so i think i'll bring an end to that string of debate now i'm going to ask the three lions i want you guys to give a starting point one of your arguments and then i'm going to ask eyc group two to respond so can i ask you to give your starting argument would you leave your child in the park with strangers no you wouldn't but if you let them on social media you are exposing them to the whole world which is worse than leaving your child at the park with strangers okay so access to internet social media for young students leaves them exposed to you know very dangerous people what would you say to that um i think that if like you had a child and you let your child use social media there is certain boundaries that you could put your um, account on private therefore like not so many people can see what you're posting or what you put on social media and only your friends can actually um, see. Okay, so there is already measures in place to ensure that uh, students can use social media safely. So if there are such measures in place, why? Wh what's the problem? Where is it coming from? Uh, let me take Snapchat for an example. 
Snapchat have recently added a new feature where they um, where can you hold hold the mic. Where please. you have where they, where they can track your locations. If if this yeah, this is not very safe, even though your friends can see it, other Snapchat themselves can uh, see where you are. If one person was to get this information, and they can use it for the wrong stuff. Okay, so. Um, even though there are measures, so Snapchat's newest features, you can uh, locate anyone from anywhere, so clearly it's not safe. Um, on Snapchat's newest feature, there's also uh, a part where you can go on ghost mode and no one and no one can see your location, only you, so um, including that none of your friends can see it either. So. Okay, so there's a measure. So you come back to the same argument of social media is dangerous, but then there's a measure to contain it. So would you have any response to that? Sometimes it can like, it can turn on by itself. So you have an option, but some kids could like not listen to the options that they are given. Okay, so, um, you know, there are measures in place, but you know, as uh, certain news events may prove, there's always a way around such safety measures. Cyber hacking, a big thing nowadays, people can hack into account, get information. So, if there may be measures in place, but if they're not working, what's the point of having them? Would you have a response to that? So, would you like to respond or do you want me to move on? Okay, I think I'll move on to the next string of uh, debate. So now I'm going to ask, yet again, the EYC Group 2, can you guys give one of your starting arguments and we'll see how well the three lions can respond. Um, one of you um, mentioned something about not having enough sleep if you're on your phone. How does that relate back to school? Okay, so how does not having enough sleep relate to school and study? Because if, if you're on your phone all night, and then the next day you've got school, how are you going to concentrate with your work? You're just going to be sleepy. Okay, so at night, I, I know I, I do it myself. I do spend <laughs> about two hours on my phone and I do feel quite tired in the morning. So um, if I have school the next day, then it's going to affect my performance. So what do you say to that? I think every person has like their own boundaries. So if you have a phone, like people are messaging you, you can put your notifications um, like off. <coughs> And you won't get none of your messages. But also, like, if your parents or something got in the house, you can sort of give the phone to them, and then you can just go sleep straight away without any distractions. Okay, so personal control. If you're a student and you know that you want to do well in school tomorrow, surely you should be able to control yourself, give your phone to your parent, or put your phone on silent while you have a good night's sleep. What would you say to that? But some students don't do that. So there's some that do and some that don't. Because they just don't listen to what they're supposed to do. Okay, so he's saying there's some students that will be able to control themselves, some students that won't. But if you take mobile phones out of the question, then obviously what happens is you just completely take that problem completely out of the way. So what would you say to that? Um, all kids, like, it's not really like, it's not a parent that decides, um, not all the time at least, it's not a parent that decides for the child to give them their phone. It's sometimes the child's um, decision because like like you said like if there's a test the next day then they should like in their own manner give it to their parents so they don't get distracted overnight okay you got a response for that there are some children who, who don't pay attention to tests they don't give that much attention to tests even though they have tests there and they know that they want to do well but then they think that um, that if they um, even if they take the take the test they, they don't care because they think it's not an important test and uh, because of this I don't think children um, actually have their own sense of thinking where, when they should give their phone to their parents okay so because children are still very young uh, some students might not take tests as seriously as other students and they may just look at it as not anything major and as a result they'd rather spend their time on their phone looking through Instagram or Snapchat rather than actually having a good night's rest. Would you have a response to that? Um, I don't think everyone like, should rely on like, their parents all the time. So if someone thinks that their test is import like isn't important, then like they should learn like the hard way saying if they fail that test, maybe like next time they won't 
um, they might give their phone to their parents and then they might actually revise. And yeah. Okay, so technology and social media also damages an aspect of responsibility in the student. Okay, so I'm going to uh, move on now to another string of debate. So I'm going to ask uh, the three lions to give another one of your opening arguments or, uh, yeah, one of your opening arguments against the topic and I'm going to see how UIC Group 2 can respond. So can I please ask one of you guys to give an argument, please? When it comes to homework, why can't why do kids rely on their phones? Why can't they just go to the library? Okay, so if there's alternate means other than mobile phones for studying, why do we need mobile phones? It's a sort of if it's not broken, why fix it argument? Um, students rely on their phones for homework because instead of having to go to the library, it wastes more time of you having like more time to do your homework whereas if you go on your phone it takes like five minutes to search up what you need to be searched up. The use of mobile phones and technology is much more time efficient. What would your response to that be? Uh, on the internet there's uh, the problem of fake news that when one with that uh, such as Google they don't always come come across the right news and this is a problem because if they for example they're doing an assignment on geography and they search up where's the mountain and one, uh, one and one person decides to put a fake answer just for the just for the funny side of it. He says that uh, um, that the that uh, the Himalayas mountains is in America or something, just for the uh, uh, f the fun part of it. But then this isn't quite uh, right because they'll be in the books. They they have been verified by uh, publishers to show that this is um, that this is right. However fake. However unlike internet no one's there to verify it to check if it's right or wrong okay so internet is open space whereas in books is passed through uh, authorities which can check the information make sure it's correct so if students do end up using uh, their phones they may be led to believe that the Himalayas are in fact in America which is not the case so what would you say to that um, I think that like today most of the teachers and like most subjects um, give you certain websites to like um, help with your homework or like um, help with certain tests and things like that that give you like trick questions like not trick questions like questions to use but like um, and these if your teacher is giving it to you then like it should be kind of like um, true to what it's saying yeah so okay so there's many study websites out there today which the teachers the teachers give the students to ensure that they get the right information and it helps them with their homework so they can actually know where the Himalayas are what would you say to that Do you have a response for that, please? But it's still a distraction. Okay, so regardless of the fact that it might help, at the end of the day, mobile phones are still, and social media is still a distraction. Okay, so I'm gonna bring an end to that. So what we've seen from this debating phase is that uh, both sides have very strong arguments. But we see, as I said from the opening speeches, the same sort of arguments popping up that mobile phones offer students a time efficient way of getting their work done. Uh, it offers safety for them in some aspects and it also provides them with, you know, a very easy way for them to get knowledge and help them with things such as homework. But on the other hand, we have the, th the, the, the three lions saying that um, it, it might not be safe, you know, the internet's open, it might not be true all the time and also if if we have things such as libraries, what's the need of technology and mobile phones? I'm just going to really quickly head over to the judges, and um, just I just want you to give a really brief comment on what you what you think so far from both teams about what they've, what they've said. So can I ask David quickly? Well, I think both teams have contributed to a very lively debate. Uh, they've honed in on a. A uh, couple of subjects which um, they haven't actually been able to move off and, 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 and provide more uh, uh, broad um, background to the subject, but very lively so far. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Swiber? 
Um, as David said, I think it'd be nice to hear some of the wider arguments because there are so many because technology is everywhere now, it's really current, it's an important topic to talk about, um, so there's just <coughs> so much to say. Um, but what we have heard, I think you've all touched on some of the really important arguments, so for example safety uh, in both directions, you guys saying that you know there are options, there are restrictions in place, but you guys saying maybe that's not enough. Um, so I think it's been good to hear both sides of some of the essential arguments for technology. Okay, thank you very much. And Mahmoud, very briefly, can you tell me how you feel so far? Yeah, sure. Um, I was, I'm very impressed by some of the points that were backed up by kind of stats, because uh, that brings a lot of validity and strength to your points, which is very important. So uh, yeah, keep it up and maybe try and kind of touch on some of the outside points if you can think of any as well. Okay, so the judges seem impressed with the first two rounds so far and they might seem kind now, but coming up next we have the judges question time and in that, in that phase you're going to find out they're not, they're not truly what they seem to be. So make sure you stick with us, don't leave us and you catch us after this break. <laughs> 